Hey guys, welcome to the third video. Um, what I'm going to do in this one is just quickly go over challenges to the Weimar Republic um, in 1919 and 1920. Um, we're going to be talking about the Spartacists and the Cat Putsch. So, quick overview of the Spartacists. Um, these were communists, which they means they believed that everyone should be equal and that all wealth should be owned by all people. And this was bad if you had a nice house or a car or a good standard of living because obviously it would be shared out amongst people who didn't have the things that you had. Um, they were led by a woman called Rosa Luxemburg, nicknamed Red Rosa, and they were spurred on by a communist revolution in Russia in 1917. Um, in 1917, the Bolshevik Party gained power in Russia, um, and Russia being a huge country, this gave uh, communists all over Europe um, the incentive and the um, the spur to go on and, uh, and try and take over their countries. Um, and they formed the KPD, or the Communist Party. Now, basically what happened was, on the 6th of January, they attempted to overthrow the Weimar government and President Ebert. Ebert did the only thing he could, and he asked the Reichswehr and the Freikorps. Now, we're going to focus on the Freikorps, because if you can remember back to the lesson, these were your disbanded soldiers, your ex-World War I veterans, who came back to Germany and were completely despondent to find the, the country in a mess, on its knees, embarrassed by the Treaty of Versailles. Um, these were people who believed in Dolchstoss, the idea that Germany was stabbed in the back, um, and felt totally betrayed by uh, the Weimar government. And these people hated communists and were only only too happy to go out into the streets and shoot them and, and, uh, and do horrible things to them. So Ebert called on the Freikorps to put down the rebellion and was successful. Um, now, the key thing to remember about this is not just that the communists tried to take power on the 6th of January 1919, but how this made Ebert and the Weimar government look. And this made them look weak, okay? Because at the end of the day, the president of the Weimar Republic, Frederick Ebert, had to call upon ex-World War I, um, ex-army, to go out and to stop the communist revolution. But having said that, he was successful, and in 1919, the communist um, attempt at a revolution was stopped. Um, the next one we just need to quickly look at is the Cat Putsch. Um, now, if you think about the left wing, the Spartacists, the communists having a go, in 1920... In March 1920, it was the army or the right wing's attempt to, to try and take over. So in March 1920, um, the government, the Weimar government, decided that they were going to, um, that should say a reduction, I couldn't be bothered rewriting it, that they were going to make a reduction in the army um, as part of the Treaty of Versailles. As you can imagine, this didn't go down well with either the army or uh, anyone in the Freikorps. Um, the leader of the Freikorps was a guy called Erhardt, and he refused to do anything that the Weimar government asked. Um, and together with a guy called Wolfgang Kapp, who was a right-wing journalist, decided that they were going to form a new government and they were going to put Kapp as Chancellor. Essentially, this is a revolution. They are attempting to establish their own uh, their own government. Um, Kapp, a right-wing journalist, stressed uh, the importance of a strong Germany and that the threat of communism was real. And he was right. A year before, the Spartacists had tried to take over Germany. Uh, he also talked about Dolchstoss, the idea that Germany was stabbed in the back, as well as the Treaty of Versailles. So him and Adolf Hitler will probably have had a lot in common in 1920. A quick reminder, um, the Reichswehr, or the army, were led by a guy called Lutwitz, and he supported Kapp. So essentially what you have in 1920 is the Freikorps and the army attempting to take over Germany. Um, how did Ebert stop them? Well, he used the right wing to stop the left wing, and then used the left wing to stop the right wing. He did what the only thing he could do was, because the army said the Reichswehr does not fire on the Reichswehr, they would not get involved, um, and he called a general strike. Um, now, basically, when we talk about a strike, what we mean is the civil service, um, we mean the trade unions, we mean all utility companies, going on complete strike, so nobody could do anything, and the country ground to a halt, and Cap um, and his, his putsch collapsed. And that is a nice little overview of uh, Spartacus Uprising and the Cap Putsch.